Hi, I'm Greg Hildebrandt. What you're about to see is me painting on a 1945 Bearcat. It's a World War II fighter plane, and it's the very first one I painted on for Lewis Air Legends. They sent a panel of the uh, nose cone of the plane to my studio in New Jersey. And my friend Howard Bertram, sign maker in Arizona, uh, made the mask of the circle and the lettering. And my business manager, Gene Scrocco, applied the mask to the nose section. When I uncrated the panel, I realized this was going to be a challenge. Not only was there an extreme curve in the plane itself, but it was getting more narrow as it went toward the front of the plane. The mask that had been made had not taken any of this curvature into account. Since we had not actually seen the plane, we had no idea how severe the curve was on the nose. So we therefore could not tell Howard Bertram, when he made the mask for us, exactly what he needed to do. Now it was up to me to take something and turn it into a perfect circle on an extreme curve. It actually took me about an hour to get the mask on, cut it into position, and flatten it so it was ready for the next phase. The first World War II plane that Greg painted a nose art on was a P-38 Lightning. On that plane, we didn't use a mask. Everything was done by hand. The lettering was done by hand. The background behind the girl was done by hand. And we realized when we got to this Bearcat that it was impossible to do that. It just took days. And of course, the beauty of a mask is you get such a clean edge for the letters, for, for the outside edge of the letters. It takes a while, it's very tedious working with a mask, and you have to be really careful that you don't peel it off. So once the mask was complete, the next thing that I had to do was rough sand the entire area that Greg was going to paint. This took approximately two hours of continuous sanding and then applying the mask for the rest of the lettering to keep them blocked out of the background. At this point, it's ready for him to take to the studio. After Gene transferred Howard's mask and then sanded this all down, where all the, the now white areas are in this yellow area, I brought it to the studio and I filled in side the mask areas, white acrylic, three coats of white acrylic. And then I transferred the outline of the figure and then yesterday I started painting the yellow behind the figure. Next I put down a piece of carbon paper, in this case two sheets, and flipped the uh, drawing down so I can transfer it. I start that with the head and uh, draw the whole figure in with a ballpoint pen. Then I wipe off all the uh, excess carbon that was left on the paint and I start painting. I've mixed up my colors for the skin already in the flesh and the hair and the eyes and I always when I start with a figure I start on the eyes. It gives me a center or a balance that uh, I need. I find that after drawing and painting the human figure for many many years that it's all in the eyes. The eyes are the soul of the figure. If you don't get those eyes right, nothing works. I don't care how much time you spend on it and how you, much detail you put into your painting. If the eyes aren't there, forget it. After I've roughed in the eyes, I move to the other features and then block in the shape of the face. Um, in this case, starting in the shadow area, in the darkest values. The focus, as I proceed applying color, is to maintain the drawing of the figure. I mean, as you apply different values from highlight to shadow, things can get out of proportion and get slightly crooked. And so you have to constantly maintain this focus, and especially in this case, it's doubled because of the, the problem, because of the fact of the curve of the plane. 
So you're painting on this curved surface that the drawing has to be uh, the same proportion all the way around the curve. This phase is all about blocking in the figure. It's not about you know, detail or rendering or really that much blending, really. That I do as I finish. But here, it's just about getting all the colors down and the values down in the right positions. Clearly, we've sped up the video. I really wish I could paint that fast. But it's actually about two or three days of work up to this point. Every time I paint on one of these warbirds, in my mind I go back to the Second World War. I was born in 1939, and the U.S. wasn't in the war until 1941, so I was just a little kid, but I can still remember. I can remember seeing the planes at the Detroit airport, or where I'd go with my father, and I was born and raised in Detroit, and I watched these planes uh, take off and land. Also, I drew planes from Tearing the Pirates, the comic strip by Milt Kniff in the Second World War and uh, they were just beautiful objects to me and fantastic to draw and now I'm blown away by the fact that I'm actually painting on them. I was 60 years old when I started painting pinups and I was about seven when I saw my first pinup on a Gil Elvgren calendar in my grandfather's basement. Nose art on World War II fighter planes is really the ultimate in pinup art because it's a graphic representation of what the boys were fighting for. Now I'm moving to the uh, lower section of the panel. I had to uh, readjust the entire thing and curve the top away from me and bring the bottom section up towards me at a 45 degree angle. That's what I kept doing all through the painting of this uh, pinup. It had to keep shifting and altering. And again, the uh, uh, main focus was maintaining the drawing, making sure that everything was in the right proportion because it was very easy to get things all out of whack, you know, legs too short, legs too long, foot too small, foot too big. But it's a challenge, and I love it. I'm 74 years old, and I've been painting and drawing professionally, illustrating, doing documentary films, uh, storyboards, you name it, for about 55 years. And at this stage of my life, I consider myself one of the luckiest guys in the world to be spending half the year drawing and painting beautiful women. This painting took about two weeks to complete. The last two, maybe three days of it, I spend in detailing, uh, double checking everything to make sure it's accurately drawn, to make sure the, the blending is good, to make sure the edges are all clean, uh, and uh, just in overall just checking on everything, just making sure it's all correct. I really have no idea how many collectors there are of World War II fighter planes. But I think it's a fantastic thing that they do, that they have the knowledge and the desire and the passion and the wherewithal to keep these planes alive and flying. It's uh, really an homage to the past and history, and they're keeping that all alive, and I think that's a great thing. Most World War II fighter planes had a name. In this case, this plane was called Tai Wan An. And the owner of the plane wanted a, a painting of an Asian girl with a drink. So I, I got an Asian model and, and took pictures and then drew uh, sketches of the pose and sent them to the owner and he decided to change the pose. So the model Asian girl was no longer available for me so I got a friend just to pose for the body. And that's why you see these two separate photographs. Well, many times uh, when I'm doing a pinup, I'll use maybe three different models. Uh, 
you know, your a head here and then, you know, the rest of the body there or a hand or a leg. And it's like piecing it together like Dr. Frankenstein. The very last thing I do is go around the edges. In this case, it's uh, the edge light, which is something I like a lot, that it defines the figure and separates it from the background. Once I've finished painting the figure, Jean then proceeds to remove the mask from around the letters and also the mask around the circle. And then she'll uh, proceed to paint the hand paint, the letters in, and hand paint the circle in. I paint the circle and the lettering because I have a very steady hand. It's an amazing thing to work on these planes. But more important for us is that after all these years and the four planes that Greg has painted, we've made some excellent friendships with wonderful people who keep a piece of history alive forever. Once the panel was complete, Greg checked out everything. He was happy with it. We created it, it flew back to Texas, it went back on the plane, and here she is in Texas at Lewis Air Legends, home.